Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show you the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, well-being, amazing events, and great people. Today, I am joined by an amazing young woman, Dr. Chelsea Kiesler. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited you could definitely make it. Yeah. So please tell me about you and um, and what you do. And, okay. Yeah. So I'm a chiropractor. Uh -huh. um, I have my own business in Mayapak, Kiesler Chiropractic. Uh -huh. uh, and what I do is performance improvement, injury prevention, and injury rehab mm -hmm. through balance training, gait analysis, gait being the way we walk, chiropractic care, and also cognitive therapy. That's extremely fascinating. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm 26. Amazing. So you shared with me a very important exercise that I wanted you to share with my viewers because um, I always say as an RD and nutritionist, we always consider the outside in terms of exercise and maintaining lean muscle mass and, and reducing weight or reducing a size. But I don't think, Dr. Kiesler, a lot of people take into consideration nourishing their brain and it's so vital. Definitely. So that's one of the major components we look at at my office. Um, we know that the average person, we need to baseline what's called your brain speed or that average speed of processing. And then we look at attention, focus, memory. So the exercise that you were talking about actually turns back to balance. Right. So we know that balance nourishes your brain. And that's a big statement, mm -hmm. but we have science to prove it. Um, there was actually a study out of the Kyoto Institute in Japan run mm -hmm. by Dr. Tabera. Mm -hmm. They looked at healthy adults, and they were trying to correlate balance and dynamic control with risk of stroke and microbleeds in the brain. So what they did was they took healthy adults, and they had them try to balance on one leg mm -hmm. with their eyes open, mm -hmm. and they recorded the amount of time they could balance without falling over. They then looked at their brain through MRIs. What they found was that adults who could balance on one leg, eyes open, for less than 20 seconds, mm -hmm. had small white spots on their MRIs called oh. petechial lacunar hemorrhages. Okay. So what that means is they're just small microbleeds. Right. So that can lead to cerebral small vessel disease, which we know has a high correlation with stroke risk. Right. Those of the adults who could balance for 60 seconds had almost a perfectly clean MRI. So in my office, I have what's called Dr. Kiesler's Two Minute Club. So for healthy adults, we want you to be able to balance on one leg mm -hmm. for 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. The two minutes comes in because you should do it both sides 60 seconds, less <laughs> two minutes. Okay. Um, to make it more challenging, we can have you do it with your eyes closed. Right. When you do it with your eyes closed, you should get to 30 seconds. Uh -huh. That time cuts in half because we actually remove one of the key components of balance because your balance comes from three places. It comes from your eyes, comes from your best vestibular system in your ears, uh -huh. and it also comes from your proprioceptors, which are nerves uh, and receptors that are in your feet right. that actually read the ground for you and tell your body where you are in space. So when we have you close your eyes to do that test, mm -hmm. we take out the visual component and mm -hmm. you'll find that a lot of people falter. Mm -hmm. What someone could hold 60 seconds eyes open, they right. might hold for three or four seconds eyes closed. Right. And it's a wake up call to them. They say, well, what's going on? It's because they haven't been forced to train those underlying nerves right. to read the ground properly. Right. We are walking through life we can't walk and look down at the ground. We have to walk and look at our surroundings around us. Mm -hmm. Everybody, young kids, athletes, um, our parents, our grandparents, mm -hmm. you know, we cannot live life looking down. Right. That's the job of our feet and our proprioceptors. Right. So that's one of the key components that I address on a first visit with people is understanding, are you reading the ground properly? Right. And then in doing so, is your brain being nourished? Right. Yeah. Right. Fascinating. Very fascinating. I know uh, I run a couple of times a week, like five, six miles, and I know there are a group of people that walk backwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you shared it has to do with balance, yes, right? Yes, definitely. And, so when we walk, right. we go through a stage of balance, rebalance. Right. One leg on the ground, one leg up in the air. We rebalance. We shift. We rebalance. So when you walk, again, 
you're looking at your surroundings in front of you. You can't possibly walk looking at the ground right. or else you'd you know, run into everything and everybody. Yes. So the idea yeah. of walking backwards uh -huh. is taking out the visual component. Right. Your eyes are still open, but you're looking in front of you, but you're moving backwards. So again, you're relying on your ankles, your core strength, the lower extremity strength, and those proprioceptors to know, okay, I'm stable, I'm moving, right. I'm not gonna hit into anybody right. because you cut out that visual component. Yeah, I, I, when I came to your office, I was extremely impressed um, because being a scientist prior to graduate work, you and I talk like science <laughs> geeks, but- a little um, bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> But I was extremely fascinated in terms of your testing and its relevance in terms of sports performance. Can you share that with my viewers? Sure. So definitely. So most people say, you know, I'm not an athlete. What does it matter that I can balance? Or what does it matter that I walk symmetrically, symmetrically being same side, right and left, forward and back? Mm -hmm. But we say that everyone has their own athletic feats in life, uh -huh. whether it's a uh, baby learning to walk, if it's, you know, the little leaguers that I train being able to run the bases, if it's my grandma being able to walk around the grocery store without getting fatigued mm -hmm. or stepping off a curb and knowing mm -hmm. that she's not going to fall down off, you know, a, a four inch step. Sure. So sure. we have that athletic ability within us all right. and it just needs to be trained. So that's what I do. I look at how we walk primarily and mm -hmm. how we balance mm -hmm. again, because it goes back to the brain. Right. We all want to live long, healthy, nourished lives. Sure we do. And that's right. what I focus on. Right. And one of the tests you had me do had to do with light or, or, or perceptibility response time. Yeah. So that? that's one of the describe? games we have in our office right. um, that pertains back to that cognitive training. Right. So it's a game where you have to distinguish one image that's separate from the other four. Mm -hmm. And as you get it correct, the image flashes quicker and quicker in the light system we use. Mm -hmm. This relates back to a game that we do um, on our cognitive platform called Brain HQ. Mm -hmm. So this is how we get your baseline speed of processing. Right. That just simply means how quickly you can attend to a stimulus, the stimulus right. being the light, right. differentiate, find the one picture that's different from the others, right. and then recall it. Right. So we know that that is your baseline brain speed. Uh -huh. And most people, when they come, they ask me, well, what should it be? Or what does everybody else get? Sure. And I say, it doesn't matter what everybody else gets. What matters is if you go home and you train and practice with the Brain HQ platform, mm -hmm. either online or through your iPhone or through a tablet, mm -hmm. that you're improving. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So with the athletes or with anybody, anybody you know can have a concussion or a traumatic brain injury. We know that no injury can occur to the brain without affecting brain speed. So I make sure that we do follow-ups and we monitor, okay, if you're doing your homework, the Brain HQ, right. and you're working, does that speed improve? Can you recall things faster? Can you process faster? Can you react to the stimulus faster? Right. God forbid um, an athlete falls and hits their head or right. you know, gets smacked in a football game. Sure. If that brain speed is slowing down, we mm -hmm. pull them immediately from the game right. because we know that something is going on. Yeah. That's extremely fascinating. And when I was there, I thought it was extremely um, interesting that you provide came, games that these kids came in that are in athletic sports. Mm -hmm. um, and playing the game, they didn't. I don't believe they totally realized how much they were nourishing their brain and developing whatever areas that needed to, to be improved. And it was wonderful to see because I'm always saying on this show uh, the importance of unplugging our kids mm -hmm. and getting them out in the fresh air and getting them away from video games and more in terms of what you're saying, either by improving themselves with small games or what you do. And it's a very unique approach and helping kids of all ages. Yeah, definitely. And you also shared, what other groups do you also work with? You mentioned dancers? Yes, so I was a dancer from the age of three till 18. Yeah, so times. I have a very, um, a love for the dancers. Sure. Same thing, gymnasts, they need stability. Cheerleaders right. need stability. Right. Um, any type of athletes. We primarily in my office right now work a lot with 11 year olds. Right. Um, when they started at nine years old, their right. baseline brain speed or how quickly they could process something was 700 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So it took them three quarters of a second to say, 
okay, I saw the picture, I remember it, I can identify it. Right. After 10 weeks of training, that right. 708 milliseconds right. sped up. They were able to process quicker to 32 milliseconds. That's physiologically the best that you can do. Right. We know That's that a blink right. is 25 milliseconds. Right. So they can attend to something and identify and recall it sure. a little bit quicker than a blink. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so helpful. Um, when my daughter's growing up, she was extremely competitive as captain of cheer squad varsity. And I couldn't believe over the years in terms of how many injuries occurred. Mm. I wish I knew you and what you did when I was going through those uh, years. Mm -hmm. Because every single practice, every competition, someone got hurt. But there was no way to facilitate what the damage was either short term or long term. And I think this is extremely essential, like I said, as an RD, that we're all talking about the the physicality in our mm -hmm. outside body, but how many are really thinking about these these situations or these exercises to nourish our brain, the most vital thing we have. Exactly. At uh, my office, we care about the long term athletic development of children. Mm -hmm. So I know that the 11 year olds I'm training, they're not all going to go to the MLB. But what I care about is that they're graduating from the minor leagues of childhood to the major leagues of life. That's what I care about, that they're ready to accept whatever comes to them, that they can handle their situations, that they can react quickly, um, and they maintain that quick brain speed. You know, we don't let them slow down. And God forbid, if they are slowing down, we can identify it and then we can intervene. Right. Uh, extremely informative. Um, I can't thank you so very much thank for you. being on my show. You yeah, know so much for so young and you are so inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Remember when you eat well, select great foods and feel great. It's something you want to do for the rest of your life. Remember balance and moderation is key. Thank you to my wonderful crew. Have a great night. <laughs>